Well, as you uh, praise us for our technological video editing prowess, um, I'd like to read something to you before we get started. The events that began and continue in Charlottesville and in other parts of this great nation are beyond disturbing and bring sadness and sorrow to anybody with a conscience. Every human being is created in the image of God and therefore has innate value and should be treated as such. As Americans, we are given the freedom to speak out and gather to do so. Any person or group that abuses this right by intending to scream vulgar obscenities at the other party or brings shields and weapons to a gathering that is supposed to be peaceful expression abuses this right. No matter whether you agree with a person's opinion or not, vulgar, verbal abuse and physical violence is never acceptable. We are not cavemen. If fools want to gather to scream foolishness, let those with a mind let the fool scream to the trees. Please allow the fool to exercise their American freedom, but do not give the fool an audience. Amen. As Christians, please understand that Ephesians 6.12 would tell us that we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. People are not the enemy. People, uh, Jesus commands us to love the people that we wrongly view as our enemy and to pray for those who persecute you. In this way, it says, you will be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. The way that all the protesters have acted, whether you agree with their position or not, is light years from the gospel and by no means represents Jesus in any way. This is not Donald Trump's fault. It is not a Democrat or Republican issue. It's not a North or South issue. It's not a black, white, communist, Jew, or Nazi problem. This is a fight between good and evil, darkness and light. And Christians, I plead with you to be a force of light to be a force of love, forgiveness, and peace. Let us bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to these areas of darkness. Amen. 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 I'd like to pray with you, please. Hey, brother. I love you. Father, we're... Uh, I, I, as someone who doesn't watch television, I was not aware of the, of the heinous... And, and, and deviant darkness and evil that has invaded our country until yesterday. And to watch it breaks my heart and I can't imagine what it does to you. The most evil of people that were there doing the most heinous heinous of acts is deeply loved by you and your son died on the cross for that person even the one who drove the car he died for that person and so lord <laughs> we just pray like it says in your word for everyone there's too many to pray for individually we don't know their needs but as a as a, as a group and as a nation, as a people, we just pray for all of us that we would somehow find you and you would help us and bring peace where there's no peace and hope where there's no hope and, and let love invade the hearts of those who are so bitter and angry and Lord, they're so filled with hate and I pray for them. We we pray for them, Lord, that you would save them and change them much like you did to the Apostle Paul. That you would save them much like you did for me and for all of us here in this room. Lord, if there be a Christian amongst that crazy crowd and only your spirit would know, I I'm not you. None of us are. We can only see the outward, but we don't know the heart. And even though there's disgusting acts of violence, perhaps there's some 
that are acting out because although they've made the decision to make you Lord and Savior of their life, they've been distracted, they've been led astray, they just can't see straight. And they act in their flesh and on feeling and on history instead of letting you control who they are. And so, Lord, we want to pray for the Christ followers in the, in the fray of all this craziness, that they would hear your voice and lay down the hate and pick up the love that you have for them and give it to other people. And for those who came with guns and shields and those who are still yelling, screaming obscenities and vulgar and nastiness to one another, would you speak to them? Do something. Do something, Lord. Help them all. Lord, invade that place. Make that the greatest missionary field that this country will see this year. Send the Christians. Send the gospel, Lord, with us to share the good news that they don't need to hate anymore, that they can be loved and they can love. Lord, we pray your divine protection over our community. While I was on the road to Chicago, I walked into a gas station. And I walked up to get a coffee. And this friendly black man looked at me with a smile. said, how's your day going? I said, it's going great, brother. How's yours? And he smiled back and said, it's going good. Would that same spirit permeate Charlottesville, Lord? Please. Let those who know you make you the Lord. Not their circumstances, not their history, not what their friends tell them, not what the culture says, not what the media says, not what their political party dictates, but let your spirit swell inside of them that they might follow you. Please, please, Father. We ask all this in Jesus' name. If you agree with all that I have said, and want this prayer to be yours, that God might respond, please say amen. 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 Awesome. <clears throat> well, we need to spread out a little bit, man. I'm getting freaked out. And you're my wife, and you can stay close, but Tim, you got to move, man. <laughs> I was never here. <laughs> <laughs> Still closer to your wife. No problem. <laughs> your girlfriend. She is my girlfriend. I love her heart. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. No, I do. Really, I do. It's just rap. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I was told at this conference that I'm not allowed to talk shallow anymore. I hate that conference. Okay, so for, for all of you that, that are wondering why we're all sitting up here, um, we wanted to share with you our experience this past week. Um, we went to Harvest Bible Chapel in Rolling, uh, no, I'm sorry, in Elgin, Illinois. It's uh, just outside of Chicago, about an hour north. Uh, we hit every bit of traffic leaving the hour north home to leave to come back here, and it took us three hours to get to Chicago. Um, it was brutal. We hit traffic parking lot in Chicago. We hit a parking lot in Nashville, and we hit a parking lot in Atlanta. We timed it perfectly. It was awesome. It. We couldn't have done it better if we tried. Oh, you got it in too? Awesome. So, um, we, we wanted to share with you our experience, but we didn't, we're, we want, I just want to let you know right, right out of the giddy up, we're not, we're not vertical church. We're not Harvest Bible Chapel. We're, we're Revolution Church. And so what I'd like to do, as I've asked uh, these guys to come up and, and join me, um, they've all got some things they'd like to share with you too on different facets of what we experience. But not just that, we want to, uh, we want to take that and incorporate it into 
um, expressing to you, because there's so many new people here, uh, who we are and why we do what we do. And we want, this is my goal. My goal is I would like to see the, the ever-present chasm that, that's in, in every single church in the world, the chasm between the leadership that's on fire for Jesus doing stuff and the people in the pews. And I want to call you into the mission of the church and give you purpose so that you're not just yes. attending here. You're part of what God is doing here to reach the ends of the earth with the gospel. And that's what this is about. So what was going to be one evening is now, as I've studied through what we've been doing and all this stuff God's been pouring into me, I want to take this and I'm going to expand on this for maybe two to three weeks. And so the next couple of weeks, I'll just, I'll just be doing this. But this week, I wanted to kick this thing off by letting you all hear about what we experienced up there. Now, this is an extension of what we've been doing on Wednesday nights for what, a year? On Wednesday night, we've been doing a study called Vertical Church. And what that means is we want greater meaning and purpose for our gathering. I realized when I was in Chicago that I, I got saved in a great church. We sang songs. You guys ever do that? Go to a church and sing songs? You go to a church and the preacher preaches. But that was it. They just sang songs. I spoke to a worship leader that I know recently very recently and he said at this point that's all he does is he picks four songs gets together with the band and makes sure that on Sunday they don't suck <laughs> that's sad to me it is. that's very sad to me and that's a big church there's purpose in what we do and I want to call you into that purpose because God has something massive for this church and you're part of it and so that means he's got something massive for you personally. And so I want to share this stuff with you, and I want you to attach to that. That's my goal. I'm not trying to hide that from anybody. So blatant. So this whole thing about vertical church is, what does God want in the church? Not what you want. I don't want to hurt your feelings right out of the gate, but if that's what it takes, that's what it takes. It doesn't matter what you want. Welcome to revolution. <laughs> That's all that matters because Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I will build my church, not Moses' church, not Meredith's, not Paula's, not Ricky's, not anybody's, his. And so what, what we're searching for is we want to find out from God's word, what does God want in church? Amen. And so we've been studying on Wednesday nights what it is that, that will satisfy the longing that's been in your heart for more when you went to church other than sing, preach, go home. There's more to this. Listen, I said it earlier, we're fighting for the souls of man. That's the most epic journey and adventure you could possibly be on. And, it's, and, and life is more than just waking up, punching the clock, making a check, paying your mortgage, and dying. And that's what we've been doing. And there's so much more. You're in, you're in an eternal battle against darkness, and Jesus is your king to go get souls for him. That's what he's called you to. And that's what our church is endeavoring to be. So, so there's some things that we want to do so that we can see this happen. And so this is what vertical church is all about. Don't worry about this horizontal stuff of, of, of social injustice and, and felt needs. Those are all things Christians do, right? Amen? Okay, I, okay let's, just, let's just say this. I don't know about your mom's church, but this ain't your mama's church. And if you feel something swell, like you can say amen. amen. You can say hallelujah. hallelujah. You can say yeah, man. Amen. Go, God, go. Whatever. Just listen, y'all. I don't get paid much. I need you to yell. That's my pay. Okay, so, so, so here's, here's, it's not about that. It's not about these horizontal things. It's about this. It's about having you connect powerfully right here. Amen. And when we do this, you will do this. Amen. But we could chase special work projects and, and outreach till, till the cows come home and never know Jesus. So here's a verse that I'd like to share with you that I think encompasses. They didn't even talk about this at, at Vertical, but I think it encompasses everything that vertical church is. Can you bring that up for me? 
Have, put it up on the screen. It's not up. Okay, there it is. Colossians 1.18. And he, Jesus, is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. That means he was the first one to resurrect, right? Why? That in everything, someone say everything. Everything. Everything, he might be preeminent. Okay? So that everything that we are and everything we do, that Jesus is the focus of everything. Every single thing we do in church, always. That's vertical church. Amen. Let me explain to you what I don't mean. I'm not going to mention the name of the church because that would be bad. And I'm sure their hearts are good. And I don't know. But while we were in Chicago, we went to another church on the Saturday night. And on Saturday night, this place seats 7,000 people. It's one of the largest churches in the country. And we went in there, and there wasn't 7,000 people. There was probably, how many people do you think were there? 2,500? Maybe. Probably 2,500 people. So it's 2,500 people who have a hole in their heart that only Jesus can fill. Would you agree? Yeah. yeah. Okay. They sang, and it was, I mean, you got, there's big bucks over there, man. They got the best talent there is. The voices were clear. It was good. And while we were there, this young man, Josh, who's not here with us tonight, but he just got saved here just a couple weeks back. And he leans over to Michael and I and goes, this is just a show. I mean, he sensed it was just, and we were sensing, like, but I'm not going to say nothing, but it was just like, tch, 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 tch. <laughs> so, so there was that. And then this guy came, gets up 2,000 or so people in the room. And he's a psychiatrist. And he starts preach. He starts teaching something accountability. on accountability. He said, if you want, if you purpose to see something happen in your life, there's a way to get that done. And he taught us to how to horizontally deal with each other. That was the first time I ever walked out of a church service. I couldn't even stomach listening. And I looked back and one after another they came walking out. They couldn't take it anymore. Once you taste the Lord and know that he is good, nothing else will satisfy you. Amen. And there's a heart in the seat that longs for Jesus and his word and psychological Zig Ziglar, Anthony Robbins, mumbo jumbo, doesn't belong at the pulpit of Jesus Christ. Okay. And so just to rub it in, they went to harvest and they missed almost all of it, but walked in for the last, how much? How long? How long? Last end of the service. Like 20 minutes. Tell, can you, would you share a little bit about what you experienced there? This is the church that we went to the conference, the ones that are focused vertically. Can you share a little bit about your experience just in the last 30 minutes of the service? Pretty powerful. Um, James McDonald was up there preaching, and uh, I can't remember what he was preaching about. But it was powerful, though, I'll tell you. It was powerful. It was powerful. <laughs> I don't know. There was, there was so much preaching going on. There was so many it's conferences. Yeah, it's we, been... we heard a lot. And to, to remember what happened in the beginning, I know that um, the seats were filled and somebody greeted us as soon as we came in and we got to sit down back where the children cry. And, uh, <clears throat> that's conviction. That wasn't, yeah. that's not tears. Yeah. yeah, so we were in, way in the back. But you could feel that there was love there. You could feel it right away. And... Um, Catherine Scott, was it? Mm -hmm. I can't remember. Um, she sang powerfully. Thank there you. There you thank go. You. So I can hear you. And uh, it just started out great. And then, of course, once we got to the conference, it just got up from there. Yeah. 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 Um, when we walked in there, there was uh, what really struck me was that um, there was nothing flashy. There, um, kind of like our building, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was it did none of the horizontal stuff mattered like 
didn't matter if there were perfect lighting or fog machines or um, whatever. I don't know. It, the word of God was preached um, boldly. And um, I don't know. It, it was just different. The, the, the atmosphere in there was different. And it, and it wasn't about um, programs or, um, you know, all the things that church shoppers look for. Um, and li like we said, we, we went in late because um, we were just pulling into Chicago. And uh, it, didn't, it didn't matter. We didn't have to get warmed up to get to this place. Uh, to accept what what was coming at us, we we just walked in, bam! There's the word of God, and that's it. Hammer. And it didn't matter that we weren't there for uh, the songs to or whatever. It just hammer, good, awesome. We love yeah. you. See ya. Later. Yeah. So they had a great time. We had a horrible time. That was awesome. Thank you. Um, <laughs> but uh, there's there's a big difference in a church where God's word is proclaimed and Jesus is exalted and all of the things are lowered. Yeah. Uh, and that's what we're shooting for here. Um, and so um, I'd like to just introduce to you what that says on the screen underneath our name. That is sort of our identity, our identity statement. And what it says is that we are a gospel-centered, culture-creating community bringing beauty to the world. And so I want to incorporate the things that we learned uh, with with that and what we do to see that that comes to pass. Okay, so that's where we kind of weave those things in. Um, so I, I want to just say this, at our church all the time, um, I don't know if you're ever going to get sick of it, and I, I hope that you won't, but we are going to pray to Jesus, we are going to sing to Jesus, and we are going to talk about Jesus, and that's what we're going to do here. Amen. We have endeavored to do that for seven years, and that will never, ever, as long as, there's, as His grace is upon me to give me breath in my lungs, that is what we will do at Revolution Church Amen. every single time we gather, right. okay? And, and when that happens, the glory of God comes down and creates passion in the saints to worship Him. He said we're to worship Him in spirit and in truth, and so we want to pour the truth of who God is into you, and that will stir up your spirit man or woman to worship Him aggressively, and that's what we're shooting for every single time that we come. So I want to share some things with you, and, and I want to do like they did at Willow. I just want to kind of share like our opinions on, on things. Is that okay? No. <laughs> You're supposed to yell at me. And say no. Say no, preacher, open your Bible. Open your Bible. Open your Bible. Okay, this is Scott, just so you know. You guys know everybody knows Scott? That was the guy snoring on the bus. Yeah. The alien. Yes. He's the alien. Um, <laughs> and this is my amazing wife, Meredith. And she heads up our children's department here at Revolution Kids Church. And if you want to volunteer to help her, you can. <laughs> Shameless plug. And you should, yes. And this is Tim. Tim Murata, and Tim oversees all the audio, video, and lighting, and things of that nature to create an environment of little distraction so you can worship Jesus well, and this is his wife, Jessica, and she is our worship leader, so that's who we are, and I would like to share some things with you first about preaching. That's what I love to do. It's when I feel the most alive. And I'd like to share with you what God's Word says about preaching. It doesn't say to tell you stories about my dog and, and my vacation at, on the islands, which never will happen because I'm broke, um, uh, with my beautiful wife. It doesn't say that. It actually says some things specifically in the Word of God, and that's, uh, that's what I'd like to share with you so you can understand why we do what we do here. Every single week, I always tell you to crack open your Bible and turn to, and we read the Word of God. And we herald the Word of God because we know that the Word of God has the power to change. And so, to change you. So, this is what the scriptures say in 2 Timothy 3.16. You can open your Bible, please, if, you, if you'd like. I'm sorry, 1 Timothy 3.16, I believe it is. 1 Timothy 3, is it 3? I can't even read. I'm going so blind, I can't even see it. No, 2 Timothy, right? Yeah. I can't see. 
I don't even know. I can't even see. This is the big Bible, too. Yeah, the big print. That's terrible, isn't it? Yeah. Terrible. He would wear his I'm sorry, Mommy. <laughs> 316. Why can't I find it? I've read it. I'm terrible. Three, yeah, 316. Yeah, right here. All Scripture is inspired by God, 2 Timothy 3.16. All Scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. So that's why you don't need to hear stories about uh, my goldfish or my, my golf game or, or anything like that because that's not going to help transform your life. Uh, the, the Word of God does. And so um, it also goes on to say that God uses it. What, what's it? What's it, everyone? The, no, the Scriptures, right? He's talking about the Scriptures, the Word of God. And God uses the Scriptures to prepare and equip His people to do every good work. See, so we don't need to come into the church and, and offer you a thousand programs to reach out to the world. We need to offer you the word of God because God will use it to stir you up to go feed homeless people. It'll stir you up to go to the mission field when the word of God is proclaimed to you because it has the power to change you. Hebrews chapter 4. Just go there, please. Hebrews chapter 4, uh, verse 12 and 13. You guys there? Yeah. Super important that you put your eyes on it. It says, For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. See, the word of... I can't sit, man. This is driving me insane. The word of God... This is not, this is not easy for me. The word of God gets to the point and it finds all the areas of your life that you need help with that someone's good advice won't get to. It finds its way in. It's kind of like pouring water into a jar with rocks. It seeps through and gets to all the nooks and crannies that my advice can't help you with. The Word of God gets there and it, and it, and it, and it just calls, the Word of God calls us all out. Nobody stands before the, war, the Word of God flawlessly. It gets to every nook and cranny. And so when, when you come to church, you don't want to hear my advice. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, 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 you want and you need to hear the Word of God. And, and the reason why we preach the Bible, right, is because we believe here in our church, I can't speak for any other church, we believe that this right here, it literally is God Almighty, the, the creator of heaven and earth, spoke through men, and he wrote a book. This is the words of the Almighty. Yeah. Like, I believe that with all my heart, and I'm staking my eternity on that, and we all are, and we welcome you to that, and we also believe that because it gets to all the nooks and crannies, and it teaches us what's right and what's wrong, and what to do and what not to do, we believe that when we get here every single week, and I say, now open your Bibles to Luke 15, that when we preach the Word of God, it's actually going to change you. Amen. It's not a waste of time. It's not a waste of time. We believe that when we preach the Bible that you will change and you'll be conformed into the image of Jesus Christ. And that's what we do here at our church every single week. Week in and week out. Even now when we're here to talk about a conference, what are we doing? We're preaching the Word of God. Who cares about the stupid conference, right? It doesn't matter. It's a platform to teach the Bible. That's all we're using this for. And so that's what we do here every single week. Amen? Amen. Now listen, when, when we're to bring beauty to the ends of the earth, what's the best, most beautiful thing we could bring them? Jesus. Jesus Christ, right? The gospel. That's what we do. That's what we do. And so if that's what we're supposed to do out there, why would we not do it in here? Why would we ever expect you to go do that out there if we won't do it here? 
You need to hear stories about my betta fish? No. No. You want to hear about Jesus? Yes. You need to know about Jesus. Yes. It's the only thing that's going to help anybody. Right? Okay. Yes. That's why we preach God's word every single week. And I'll tell you another thing too, just so you know, because you're new. You won't see verses like you did today on the screen. I'm not going to spoon feed you. We, we put verses on the screen because we're gonna, I want to force you to crack open a Bible so that you'll be more comfortable with it. Because if you're not comfortable with it here, you're certainly not going to read that old dusty thing at your house. So if we can get you to be familiar with it, so when someone says, open the book to Philemon, you don't go, oh, you have Philemon on you. <laughs> no, there's actually a book in the Bible. And so we open it up and we read it so that you're familiar with it, and then you'll maybe do it at home. Okay? It's really, really important that what we do here is supplemental to what you do at home. Okay? Please don't let this be your only feeding every week. All right. Um, is there anything else you guys like to share about preaching? You sat in on the preaching seminar too. Is there anything you'd like to share about the preaching of God's Word? Anybody? Okay. Um, would you like to share a little bit about children's ministry and what you experienced and what you'd like to see happen here. Would that be cool? Okay. Need a microphone. All right. Awesome. Do you want to go behind you? Well, first of all, I have to say, praise the Lord we made it there, because I didn't realize that while we were sleeping, we were being videoed the whole entire trip, so <laughs> God was with us. <laughs> <Whew>. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> The part of you picking your nose is next week's video. Oh, yeah. I love you. So while we were there, we had some breakout sessions. And of course, being the children's director, I guess that's my title. I went to these and I came back with lots of papers here that are on procedures and programs and all kinds of things that will help keep your children safe. So that's very good, and I'm glad I had an opportunity to hear these things. And some things we have already started, and some things we will um, implement, because I believe that God's going to build His church, therefore we need to be prepared. Amen. And your children need to be safe. So when we start doing these things, don't yell at me. I'm just keeping your children safe. Uh, but... That being said, the most important part and where my heart laid is I had an opportunity to hear the youth or children's minister himself came and spoke to us. And my takeaway from there that we believe here and that we've already been doing here is first of all, the children back there knowing that Jesus loves them. It's huge. That is our prayer every night that they leave here knowing that Jesus loves them. Amen. And it, when we open our Bible in 1 John 4:16, it says, "And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God, and God in them." Amen. Love is important. So they need to know that they are loved. And um, so during the week, pray for the workers that are going to be back there, that they can show a way to your... And the ones that are going to volunteer. And the ones that are going to volunteer. That they can <laughs> show love to your children in an extra special way that week. That is one of the most important thing. And then for us... And even for myself, knowing that Jesus is real, I think we hear stories about Jesus, and sometimes it just comes away as, oh, that was a good story, but that was a story. I believe that these children need to understand that he is alive, that he is living, yeah. that he is active, Amen. and that he is with us through them. So... In that, First Peter, we open First Peter one eighteen. 
I won't ask you to read it. <laughs> yeah, I can't even, I can hardly see you. Um, 18 through 21. Let me see. First Peter 18 through 21. Chapter. First Peter 1. 18. Okay. For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And the ransom he paid was not mere gold or silver. It was the precious blood of Jesus, yeah. the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. God chose him as your ransom long before the world began. But he has now revealed him to you in these days. Through Christ, you have come to trust in God, and you have placed your faith and hope in God because he raised Christ from the dead and gave him great glory. Amen. Amen. Our Christ is alive, and yes. our Christ is real, and yes. these children need to know it. Yes, amen. amen. Yes. Amen. Awesome. And then, last, and... I guess I should have talked to my husband beforehand. I don't know. Because uh -oh. I happened to choose the same verse that he chose. Because uh -oh. Everyone say, oh. <laughs> oh, we're connecting. Yeah. Aww. Um, so anyways. Wonder twin. Okay. <laughs> um, sorry. <laughs> but I believe that these children need to know the Bible. So one yeah. of the things... We do tell stories back there. But the first thing before we tell a story is um, I ask them, I ask your children, is this story just a story that I made up? And they all, no. Okay, well, where did I get this story? From the Bible? They tell me, that's their answer, from the Bible. And then I ask them, so since it's from the Bible, what do we know? And they all say that it's true. And I ask them, how do we know it's true? And they say, because it's God's word. Right. So yes. Yes. in <laughs> Second Timothy, although I went a little further than my husband did. <clears throat> I started with um, 14. But you must remain faithful to the things you have been taught. You know they are true. For you know you can trust those who taught you. That's you guys. That's your job. You guys are to teach these children. God has taught you, and it's your job to teach these children. Amen. Amen. You have been taught the Holy Scriptures, the Holy Scriptures from childhood, and they have given you the wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting Come in Christ Jesus. Come on. And yes. then he read the rest. But it's all scripture to breathe. Yeah. So that's what our children are learning back there. Mm -hmm. And I believe that that's our foundation is teaching these children who Jesus is, that they are loved, that he is real, and that this Bible right here leads is of God, leads yeah. to salvation. So that's what happened to Timothy. Uh, his family taught him the scriptures, and he got saved because of it. And so there's the perfect model. If you notice, everything that we're trying to present to you, it's not just good ideas and creative marketing. It's all based on God's word. And that's why we're hearing, you're hearing verse after verse after verse. This is what God's word says. This is what his church should do. Uh, there's more to a church than just filling a room with people. Because I think that we're kind of, you know, Jessica's a good singer. And, and she's a good, she taught for a long time. And, and I, you know, I'm, I do whatever I do. But we could, we could fill a room with funny stuff and good advice. But that's not Jesus' church, right? It's Jesus' church when we fill it based on the word of God being proclaimed and it leads to salvation. And so that's what we endeavor to do is to, is to um, teach the word of God. So not just in, in this room, but in those rooms back there all the time, age-appropriate curriculum based on God's word to those children, okay? Um, and we also, we discussed this uh, the last day or so, uh, it's not our place to, to take your six-year-old and lead them to the Lord. It's, it's just not. 
It's our place to let them know that Jesus is real, that he loves them, and this is the word of God, and this is what it says. But it's not to substitute who you are. What we do is to come alongside of you and teach them these truths. And then you are to also work with them. And we do, you know, they might not have the capacity to fully understand all this stuff yet. So we're not in there burning Barbie dolls and saying, if you don't say yes to Jesus, you're going to go to hell. Like, that was a real story I heard. Wow. Right? That's not what we do. Right? We let them know Jesus is real, that he loves them, yeah. and this is his word. We're making disciples. Amen. Yeah. That's what Amen. we do. Amen. Um, part of a, being a vertical church is to create an environment that helps you to do what Jessica shared with you earlier, which is to set our eyes on Jesus. So when we're here, we want to give you the opportunity to focus in on the Lord vertically and not be looking at the, you know, Dana's shoes over here, bright yellow. I can't, why, why is he wearing shoes like that? They don't match his shirt. And why is, why, why is, why is he on his phone? And why, and, and, and who dared leave this here and that there? And, 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 and the music's too quiet. And so you can hear the guy next to you who just definitely shouldn't be singing ever, right? <laughs> ever. Don't stand and next he's to me. singing his heart out, right? You're like, ah, right. So, 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 when, so we, we argue about volume, right? Anyone ever hear arguments in church about the volume of the music? Anyone? Uh -huh. Raise your hand, right? Uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. We hear it, right? Uh -huh. right. Yep, yep. Okay, th there's a reason that it's loud. It's not because Tim likes ACDC. <laughs> there's a reason why we do what we do. And it's to reduce distraction. I don't want you to hear my voice. I want you to, I want you to hear his voice. Yes. We want you to hear him, as Zephaniah chapter 3 says, singing over you. Yeah. You see? Scott has a, I see his microphone going up. He's got, I think, something to share with you. S Scott comes from a different background than any of us mm -hmm. have kind of throwing him on the spot here. He's toured the last 20 years playing with Phil Collins and his band. And so, you know, secular, horizontal, you know, praising Phil, just good music, right? That's what people do. And now he's here, yeah. right? Amen. And so it's, it's different. But maybe, maybe you could, uh, you guys can talk about the difference between that kind of setting and, mm -hmm. and our setting here and what we try to do here to make it conducive to be able to focus vertically on the Lord, anyone? Sure, um, I'm Scott. Um, first of all, I wanna say thank you to all of you who give generously yeah. to make it possible for us to attend conferences yeah. like this. Absolutely. I know it was an eye-opening experience for me. Awesome, thank you Moses for inviting wow. me. Um, it's actually Jessica's idea. I can't take you, the Jessica. credit. <laughs> yeah. and Thank you so much for our hosts, Dan and Leslie and Rick yeah. and um, Kyle and Jamie. My gosh, they fed us like Whew. kings. Um, so coffee and breakfast every morning before we left. And Lou Malnati's yeah. for dinner the first night we got there. It was incredible. Yeah. Um, but anyway, um, I can speak a little bit about the difference um, playing with somebody like Phil Collins. Um, first of all, Phil is a good Christian. We do have a prayer huddle before every show, and I will say show because that's what it is. Um, we are horizontal. We're there to get the crowd motivated, get them to sing and clap. Um, but we're here basically to get you to praise God, to praise Him, sing with joyful vo voices, yes. clap your hearts out. Um, it's the worship team's responsibility to take you vertical first and that, that was told to us by Andy yeah. um, and Jessica took good notes all my notes were on my iPhone which I don't have here <laughs> but um, it was yeah. called a worship song what was the next yeah I, I mean basically it's just it's, it's going from um, when you're going on a destination right um, you get in this vehicle and you're going and uh, you you know where you want to go you have reservations to the place that you're going to go to um, and 
you can have all the plans and the intentions to go and get there, but if you don't actually follow um, that route, um, if I'm going to Miami and I get on 95 North, am I going to end up there? No. 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 So our 95 South is the word of God and what he asks us to do. And he wants us to worship him. And he, um, we're not going to get up that mountain that they, they, they call it the mountain, like to go up and, and to exalt him if um, we're worried about the vehicle and the style and um, whether they're fast songs or they're slow songs or uh, how can we manipulate you into a good feeling and a good show. Um, that's not the point at all. Um, and so you, that, I would say that that's the big difference. But I, I think what you're talking about is um, he was likening it to a tour guide. And when you go on vacation uh, and you want to go see some really cool things, you have a tour guide show you around. Um, you take a whole bunch of pictures. And when he got home, he was looking at his pictures and noticed that the tour guide was not in any of those photos. But everything that he was pointing to was in those photos. And that's our job, is to be invisible. Because we don't want you guys to leave going, wow, that was, man, Scott is awesome on that trombone, and Jessica has a great voice, and uh, the music was great, and I felt really good for that moment. Um, yeah, that's garbage, and I right. don't ever want to hear that at all, right. um, because it's not about us at all. Um, you want to hear you guys sing over us so we can't hear ourselves. Amen. Amen, yeah. yes. And, and we want you leaving going, wow, God is good. Wow, I got to be in his presence. And um, just, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. Yes, so um, worship means ascribing worth to God. Um, and I don't know if you guys know that it, when we ask you to raise your hands or to clap or to jump or to sing or whatever, um, that it's thus says, says the worship team. Um, actually, God really does care about how you worship him. And um, it's in his word. It's all over his word. That's something that came alive to me on this uh, trip, that he actually cares about you shouting. Like, mm -hmm. in church, what? Yes. Um, yeah, shout. You guys want to practice that? Come on. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, that was good. Yeah. Um, that was good. Oh, he actually says he wants holy hands lifted high. Yes. yes. And he says that. That's not just the freakazoids in church, you know. Like, it actually says that in the Bible. We didn't make this stuff up. Right. It is kind of weird. When I first was, I, I got saved in a Baptist church. They didn't, no one raised their hands. And that's okay. And I was at a conference, and they actually came up behind me and, and went like this. And I was like, get your stinking hands off of me. I thought they were just trying to make me do something and conform to the image of everybody else. Right. And then I read it. Right. When, when men gather, I want to, to have holy hands lifted high. Yes. Yes. Like, that's what God, he doesn't even suggest it. No. Nope. I want it. That's what he says. Right. So, so what do we do? Yeah, yeah, Amen. yeah. We sing to him. Yeah. I know one of the things that Andy said, which once when it, it sunk in, um, he was telling a story about, well, actually, I guess it happens every Saturday night where he's at, where he will see, I think he calls him Joe Blue Collar will come in, arms crossed, shooting bullets at them when they start to sing. Um, and week after week, like he lowers his arms, his shoulders drop. He might start to sing. You know, this really got me. He said, and maybe he'll even see the guy's flipper move. <laughs> <laughs> and then before you know it, Joe has both hands raised to the Lord. And, yeah. And that is something that, and he said that he gets teary-eyed when that happens. And, and he's been the um, Harvest Babel, Bap, Bap, Bleh, Bible Church <laughs> worship leader for, I think he said, 17 years. And he said that never gets old. No. It touches him every time he sees it. And boy, I'm, I can't wait to see that here. Yeah. Really. Amen. Amen. Can I? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, please. Um, 
to touch back on the um, like the difference between a show and um, actually ascribing worth to God um, in preparation for uh, putting the music together, which worship isn't just music. You guys know that, right? Like, it it can be this right here, um, spoken word, uh, reading the word. Like we can, we don't have to sing three songs and uh, hear, you know preach. Like we yeah. can we can just read his word together and and still worship Amen. Um, so worshiping in spirit and truth um, if I base the music on what you guys want a certain style if I base what on what I want um, if I try to manipulate how you feel um, I'm teaching you guys truths out of those feelings that um, the music felt great, and so, you know, I experienced God there, which is really not true. It was all based on emotion and feelings. Um, I'm teaching you that the next time that you worship, or maybe you're at home and you're trying, you know, you're worshiping or you're reading your word or whatever, and you don't feel those same feelings, or maybe the next time you come to church and you don't get that same experience, I'm teaching you a falsehood. And that's not, that's not worship. That's, yeah. that's not worship at all. Yep. Um, that's good. And so, yeah. That's good. Yeah, I'm done. That's with good. That. That's good. I know, uh, <laughs> I know also um, that they want to magnify. Get to pick it up. I don't know if it's really picking right you up real good. Can you guys hear him? This is, this is my job. I'm usually the one <laughs> yeah. increasing the volume. It's Sorry. the beard, man. That beard's kind of... Yeah. Yeah. You get that. But no, it's it's magnifying who God is. And he, he mentioned that when you put a magnifying glass up to something, you're not changing what that is. God doesn't change. You're just magnifying what he is. You're seeing more clearly what he is. And if we can do that, if I can turn the volume up there and you can understand the words better, if you can see the words better. I know when I was watching the worship, I heard it, it was loud, it was great, but I was focused on those words. I could see those words up on the screen and they preached to me because I could see them and I could hear them and read them. But without knowing exactly what that song is, if the words aren't up on the screen, you might miss it. But if you can magnify it with the audio, with the visual, that's gonna ascribe worth to God because you're going to see him differently than you did before. Amen. Very good point. Very good point. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I want to I uh, share something that I learned. Um, it was profound to me. And, it, and it's about prayer. You know, every single week, um, you know, we get up here and we talk. Um, we, we invite you to come to prayer on Monday nights. I know on Wednesday as Robert comes up and teaches Vertical Church, he always pushes the prayer thing, and, and, and rightfully so. It's important. Um, but who in the room experienced, has, have experienced this, that you, you realize that prayer, of all the things that you, are, that you should do with God, for God, that prayer slips off the table real, real often? That we just don't pray like we should, right? Anybody? Yeah. O- almost everyone in the room, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so... So, here, so what we do is, is we, 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 we go, okay, uh, we're going to set an alarm on my phone. And, and every morning at 6.10, I'm going to pray for 30 minutes. And, and it's like a New Year's resolution. And we, and we try, right? And we pray and we ask God to do these amazing things. But the thing is that prayer is never sustained, even if God does things. Because we've all prayed and he's done things, right? Yes. Everyone. So that doesn't sustain prayer. What sustains prayer is found in the story of Mary and Martha. And I just never really even thought about this. Martha was serving the Lord and his people. And she was making the food, right? That's good. We should serve the Lord. Amen? All of us should serve the Lord in some capacity. But Mary, she found the greatest single thing. And that was to sit at Jesus' feet and just listen to him talk. And so prayer 
This is enlightening to me, and I think it's going to change my world, and I, I hope I commend it to you. It's going to change yours and our church and therefore our community and world, is that prayer is sustained when we realize the beauty and the value of being in the presence of God. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And when you come here on Monday nights, that's just, again, supplemental to what you should be doing all the time in prayer. But that's what we're here to do. We're, yes, we're here to ask them to do things. But what should draw you here, loved ones, I just want to say this again, is that you love being in the presence of Jesus. Amen. And that's it. And so that's what we do. Why do we pray? Let me share these couple verses with you. 1 Timothy 2.1 says to pray for all people, right? So we pray for those that we love and those that we don't. We pray for those that are near and we pray for those that are far. We pray for all people, right? Uh, Philippians 4.6 says don't worry about anything but pray about everything, right? And then uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.17 says there's three words in that verse. Never stop praying. Okay? So this is God's high water mark. He said, I want you to pray for all people, for all things, all the time. Never stop doing this. That's what he's asked of us to do. I should, let me rephrase that because I want to teach you well. He has not asked you to do that. He told you to do that. He said to pray for everyone, to pray for everything, and to pray in every moment for everyone and for everything, to never stop praying. So we're offering here at our church that type of culture. We're a culture-creating community, and we want to bring that culture of prayer to the world. So we need to be praying here. We need to be praying more when we're gathering. We need to come on Monday nights and pray. Come on Wednesdays and pray. Start small groups in your home and start praying with people. Go through your communities and pray through your neighborhoods and pray for the people that live there, that they would be saved and they would know that Jesus is real and that Jesus loves them and share the word of God with them if they come out their door and say, what are you doing? Share it. And so... We've, we've been hearing, hammering this book of Acts thing that we're supposed to be that church. And so what did they do? Acts chapter 2 verse 42 says that they were devoted to prayer. That church that saw thousands come to the Lord and because of it they're still coming to the Lord now in Leesburg. 2,000 years later, thousands of, ye of miles away in a different country, they're still coming to the Lord because they were devoted to prayer. Yes. And so if we are to be Revolution Church, a sudden and momentous shift in the status quo, we have to stop not praying and start praying for all people, for all things, at all times. Yeah. And be devoted to this. And if you are devoted to this, you will see what you saw in the Bible. He will bring people every single week here to fill that tank, to accept Christ and let their lives be transformed. It will, listen, I love you. I love you. It will never happen if you don't do this. And we could come here every single week for the rest of your life and you will get what you've been getting. And I'm convinced for greater things than this for you. And I believe that God wants, and He is waiting right now. The windows of heaven are bursting, waiting to bless us if we would just get on our knees and ask Him to do so. He would do it right here, right now. It's not reserved for the, for the, for the other church down the road. It's, it's reserved for everyone who knows Him and loves Him and represents Him well. And he will bless that ministry so socks off. Let me tell you a little something about the place we went. We drove up, and my wife saw on the side of the highway, this is out on a major highway, just like this one here, not bigger. And there's this building that is so gargantuan, you can't begin to believe how big it is. She's like, oh, look at that place there. It was the church. 
And we pulled into this place, and it's like a national park. It's got to be 100 acres. Got to be. Rolling hills, beautiful oak trees. It's got a parking garage under the building. Listen, this man started preaching 20, almost 30 years ago now, doing what I'm telling you. Just preach God's word. Exalt him and his son in, in worship. Don't stop praying. And, and listen, do you, know what they, do you know what God did? He, they got that building for a dollar. One dollar they paid for that entire place. It's amazing. You can't tell me God doesn't want to do that same thing. How many of you can afford to write a check for that building right now? No one. Right? Right? We can't. We can't. Right? But God has glorious, unlimited resources, it says. And, and only, look, don't you want that? Don't you want to have a church that people start pouring into all the time, every week, and they go, how is this even happening? I don't know, but God. That's what we want. And it only happens if we stay true to him. When we represent him well, he blesses. Because he's looking around going, man, they're really doing a good job of representing me there. God's, God's word says that we make, he, he makes his plea through us, right? We're his ambassadors. We carry the name of Jesus to the world, right? And so if we're representing him well and doing a good job with that, what's he want to do there? I'm going to get some people over that joint, right? He's going to bring them in. And that's, that's what we want to do, okay? Um, I think I'm done. I don't... I don't even know how much time we've, we've gone. I just want to yeah. say one thing. Is there anybody in here that hasn't been to a Monday night prayer? Raise your hands. I want to boldly challenge mm. yeah. Come on. Bring one, it on, dude. one person that just raised their hands. I challenge you to meet me here at 7 p.m. Monday night. Amen. Raise your hand if you're going to meet yeah. that challenge. Oh, yeah. And your name? Let's do it. Lori. Lori, I'm Scott. Awesome. Uh -huh. I'll be yeah. sitting right at this table. Come and join me. I Amen. hate sitting by myself. But we don't have to talk. All you need to do is pray. Exactly. All right? Amen. Awesome. Thank awesome. you, Lord. Awesome. Anybody else have anything they'd like to share? I'm gonna, I want to um, pray with you guys. It's kind of, that made sense. You expected that, right? Yeah. You expected that. I love you guys so very much. And I'm excited that, that we're on this journey together. And I just want to call you into the purpose of Jesus Christ. I don't want you to sit on the sidelines anymore. Some of you are really, really deeply involved here, and I think that's awesome. But for those of you that are just coming and dipping your toe in the shallow end of the pool, you're robbing yourself of great joy. And the Bible says that God placed us together perfectly, and as each person does their own special work, each person, who are they talking to? As each person does their own special work, it helps the others to grow, and the whole church is healthy, growing, and full of love. Don't you want that for your church? Absolutely. Uh, hasn't our neighborhood been starved long enough and not had that yet? So let's do this thing. Let's pray without ceasing. Let's, let's just devour the Word of God. Let's stay focused on that, and then let's worship Jesus Christ, okay? Yes. Listen, I want to pray with you, and then the Revolution Band. They're going to come, and I, I plead with you, don't, don't leave this room. And, and listen, we're not going to sing about the Lord. Listen, listen. We're going to sing to Him. He's here. He's listening, and He wants your praise. He wants you to worship Him. So, so listen. Can we practice this? All of you guys that hate it, I, listen, I love you, but come on, Mom. Come on, you can do this, right? You can do this. You can do it, man. I saw, he did it. Come on. I saw the fin. I saw the fin. Even Granny's doing it. Come on, Granny. Woo! Right? Listen, he said that he wants holy hands lifted high. So listen, let's pray. Let's keep, keep your hands up as we pray. That's what it says, right? So maybe, just maybe, if you're not a, a, a hand a high hell holding guy or girl, maybe, just maybe, if we're obedient, blessing will follow, right? Right? You never know, right? It's worth a try. It's worth a try. So Lord, we just come before you right now, right into the throne room of Almighty God. Not based on our performance, not even based on our value as, as your greatest creation, but based on the permission of Jesus Christ the Lord to whom we are so grateful. 
Thank you for making a way, Lord, where there was no way. Thank you, Lord, for saving us when we were, when we were beyond help, when we couldn't fix ourselves. Lord, we exalt you. We lift up the name of Jesus Christ, the God of all gods, the King of kings, the Lord of lords is this Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that we are uh, able to gather here in the name of Jesus to worship him. We thank you, Lord, for your word that is true, that is powerful, that cuts through the places that nothing else can cut through, that gets to the point of the matter. Thank you, Lord, that your word is true and that it's powerful and that when it's preached, lives change. Help us, Lord, to always stay there. Don't ever let us get off track, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for providing for our trip, just as Scott said, but now, Lord, I just receive our praise. Receive our praise now, Lord. This is not a show. It might not sound good. It might sound great. We don't know, and we don't care because we're not the focus, Lord. You are, Lord Jesus. We love you. We thank you for who you are. And Lord, open your ears to us now as we give you the praise that you deserve. In Jesus' name, amen.